Hi guys, I've had a few people asking about ScanF and I wanted to review a little bit how that works and uh, remind you how F get S and S scan F can be used in conjunction to be a little bit more robust. So first of all, and I think it was week four, we uh, talked about scan F and F get S and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and review that. Um, there is this uh, function called scan F. You probably used it in CSCI 155. You specify a character format and pointers to memory where those uh, inputs are going to be stored based on the format characters that you use. So uh, let's see how that works. We'll go ahead and just remind you. Uh, it's located in standard I.O. So I need to say include standard I.O. .io .h, right? And I'll just make a simple main program. What's it going to do? It's going to uh, print some kind of prompt. Print F, it's not Python, let's see. Um, enter a string and a, an integer. <laughs> Por favor, right? And then we're going to say uh, scan F, and it's going, it needs a format string. So we want a string, so that's percent %s, and we want an integer, so that's percent %d. Mm -hmm. Oh, but we need to give it variables where those are going to go. So let's uh, define a, a character string. Let's say it's um, 100 characters, say, just for... And then let's make an int i. That's just an integer. OK, and then we want to give it a pointer to that character string. That's just a string. And we need a pointer to an integer, so that's ampersand i. And then we'll report out what we got. Uh, yay. We got, I'll put quotes around it so we can see where the string begins and ends, and we'll use format character for, so the format characters for printf and the format characters for scanf are, are uh, pretty much the same. Now here's the thing, how do we know scanf works? Well, it turns out scanf returns a count. And since we know we're looking for two conversions, we can check to see that the number of successful conversions uh, is the same as the number we were expecting. So we can print yay if the count is two. Otherwise, we can print some kind of a some kind of an error message. Darn, that did not work. Okay. And there we have it. So let's go ahead and run that guy. Ooh, it doesn't like that. What did it say? End of string and an integer. Oh, it's, it says warning. Percent X expects a mashing car star. Ah, OK. Yes, that was foolish of me. I need to say a string and I here. So when we print, we'll actually have something intelligent to print. That looks better. Enter a string and an integer. So let's say hello, three. And it says, yay, we got hello and three. What if I tried typing um, hello and goodbye? It's going to have a hard time interpreting goodbye as a string, and it'll just say, darn, that didn't work. So it wasn't able to convert that to an integer, so, so it failed. So very good. OK. Now that's fine if you want to read from standard input and uh, from the keyboard, but what if you want to read from a file? So then the plan is you're in uh, you're in fgetS territory or fscanf. Let's uh, I'm going to include standard lib now for a reason that will become clear momentarily. But rather than prompting for them to enter a string, let's open a file. So we'll say. Uh, File star my file is f open and foo.txt, that's my favorite file name. We'll open it as uh, read only. And we'll check if my file, so if it opens successfully, uh, we want to do all this stuff. Actually, let's do it this way. If not my file, So 
So I, I, if I don't open the file successfully, and rather than try and track all that down, I'll just exit, and that way we'll know what's going on, right? Otherwise, what are we going to do? We're going to, instead of scanf, let's fscanf, and then the first argument to fscanf is, of course, the file. So it's the file we just opened. <clears throat> and we, everything else is the same, except it needs to be indented because, um, oopsie, because we're in an if there now. Well, hang on a second. It can't escape. Uh-huh, okay. Now I can't, the, the font's so big, I can't see what's going on. So if my file else, if scan f, if, okay, I got, I got, I got too many braces here, I guess. Okay, there we go. So it's, it's like scan f, except it takes a file argument, and then we can also count, and so on. So let's go ahead and run that guy. And it says, ah, I can't open the file. It's because I never created the file. So let's go ahead and create the file. Um, so I'll say new file, let's call it foo.txt, and we'll go ahead and run that. Now we got the file. Darn, that didn't work. So, oh, it got down to here, but it didn't find two things. That's because there's, uh, file's empty. So we can say hello and nine this time, right? And go back to the test, and run it. Ah, yay, we got hello and nine. Beautiful. Okay. So that's how that works. So you can open a file and you can read data from the file. Now, you, of course, you could keep um, calling fscanf, and every time you call it, it'll read more input. And then if it fails, then you know that you either hit the end of the file or something. But I would like to propose another way to do this, and that is to use a combination of fgets and sscanf. So let's... Um, Let's try that. So what I want to do is uh, create a buffer, my own buffer, that I'm going to use to hold the data from the file. Let's go ahead and make it a, um, actually be a little more uptown. And while I'm at it, I might as well clean this thing up too. Okay, that's better. That way, if I want to change the string size, I don't have to go fishing through my program to find every place where I set it. Um, okay, so what I want to do now is rather than uh, read directly from the file into the variables, I want to read into a buffer. So let's do that. Uh, we'll need a car star result to, to check to see if it worked or not. So I'm going to say uh, result equals fgets, and I need to specify the buffer, I need to specify the size, and I need to specify my file. If you forget the order of the arguments, you can always pop down to man fgets, and you can get reminded, there it is. It's the buffer, the size, and then the file. So let's go ahead and close that guy up. And then the notion is, uh, if you successfully read from the file, then you can scan, you can do all the things we were doing before. But instead of fscanf, we're going to use sscanf. And it, of course, is going to come from the buffer this time. So the idea is I can read into a buffer and then I can scan from the buffer. The nice thing about this is it makes the file pointer and the handling of the reading from the file more deterministic because if scanf fails, you don't really know where the file pointer is at the end of that. You don't know exactly what's happened. On the other hand, if fgets has read a line of text from the file, then it has the line of text from the file. You've read that whole line. If something fails, you could just keep going and read the next line and everything would be okay. But if you've used fscanf, not so much. Uh, so anyway, let's try that. 
And there it is. We got hello and nine. Same way. So anyway, I hope that helps. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon.